In this session, we want to talk about DNS resource records. In our DNS server, we have a DNS database that contains resource records. There are different types of resource records in this DNS database, but we want to take a look at two types of records in this session. We want to look at the A record, which is a host record, and the host record contains the name and the IP address of a specific host on the network. So this resource record is going to be able to map the fully qualified domain name. That is the computer name plus the domain name. For example, if your computer was called computer one, the fully qualified domain name would be computer one dot dot contoso.com. So the resource record is going to help you map this fully qualified name to the 32 bit IP4 address. So this type of resource record you call a A record. Then you have a quad record which is four A's, and this type of resource record will map the fully qualified name to an IP version six address, which as you know, is a 128 address. So the host A record then basically associates the domain names of computers, fully qualified domain names, or host names to their associated IP address. Now, users can manually add these records to zones if they have machines that have static assigned addresses or manual assigned addresses. Before we look at how we would add a host record, Using the DNS console, let us talk about another type of record. And this record is called the PTR record, standing for pointer resource record. This type of record is usually used for reverse lookups. And reverse lookups resolve IP addresses to host names or to fully qualified domain names. So for example, instead of typing the fully qualified domain name or host name, you might want to type an IP address. And reverse lookup records are usually used for troubleshooting. If for example, I type contoso.com, and I get an error. What I really want to find out is, is there something wrong with my DNS server or is the site down? If I knew the IP address of that site, what I could do is to go to the command prompt and try to look up that IP address or I can try to ping it. So if I type ping, the address 192.168.10.5 or whatever the address, the address is, and I actually get the name of the website, then I will know that the site is up and there's something wrong on the DNS server end. So the PTR record is usually used for troubleshooting. And remember, it resolves IP addresses to host names, whereas your other A record, that is, will resolve host names to IP addresses. We want to take a look and see how we would manually add a host record or a PTR record using the DNS console. We're going to look at how we would add a resource record using the DNS console. 
and we're going to manually add this record because we want to remember that DNS by default is dynamic. It's only if you are adding a static record or you're adding this record manually that you will actually need to go into the DNS console and add the record. We want to click on Tools, DNS. We want to expand the Forward Lookup Zone. We want to expand the eTech Training Zone. We want to right click on that zone and we want to say New Host A or Quad A Record. So we want to click. And what you want to do is to type the name or the IP address rather of this resource record. So we're going to click in the IP address box and I want you to note here that it says create associated pointer PTR record. So when you create this host record, an associated reverse lookup record will be created. We're going to click in the IP address box and we're going to type 192.168.10.12 and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to say add host. It says the host record etechtraining.com was successfully created. Now, I want you to remember that usually, by default, you have dynamic DNS. If you were to click on the properties of the zone, you would see dynamic DNS secure only. So your resource record, your website address gets added to the DNS database automatically. It is only if you want to add this record manually that you would right click on the zone and say new host record, which is what we did. So we're going to click on done. Now let's look at another way that we can add this record. And this time we're going to look at adding the PTR record. But remember, when we created the host record, then the PTR record was done automatically with that. But we're going to do the PTR record by itself. We'll show you how that's done. You want to right click on the zone. Then you want to click on other new records. In the list, you want to find pointer PTR record. So we're going to click on that one. And we're simply going to click on create record. What you now have to do is to type the IP address of that record. And you will have to remember the host name of that IP address or browse to find it on the network and say OK. So that's simply another way how you would create the PTR record by itself. And remember that the PTR record will resolve IP addresses to host names and is usually used for troubleshooting purposes. We want to cancel the new resource record box. We want to cancel the record type. And to recap, remember we have the host A record that resolves names to IP addresses. We also have the quad A record, which will resolve names to IP addresses of IP version 6 addresses. And we also have another record, which we looked at just now, which is the PTR record, which is the reverse lookup record. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.